All right, hey now, welcome to Post to Post this week with my, uh, my, my tag team partner in podcasting for the week. Welcome, Gavin. The nice thing about this job is that uh, it's not hard to find a wrestling fan in the building. To work here, you pretty much, like, the, the application process goes, can you talk well, and do you like wrestling? The second one's even more important. I've heard some of the other DJs on the stations here, and you don't even have to talk all that well. No, no. If you're, people I'm not a fan of. If you're a wrestling fan, you can just you can just come in and work here. So, uh, Steve was on vacation this week. We're going to have three episodes for you this week. It'll be myself, the Rob, and my tag team partner, Gavin. So, welcome, yeah. Gavin. There is no question about what to talk about today. On Friday, a whole lot happened as WWE went through their spring cleaning process. Black Friday. Got, they got rid of uh, eight names this time, and some of them more surprising than others. I've got a list here, and I wanted to get uh, some reactions for you, Gavin. So uh, let's talk about this. The first name I have on my list is El Torito. I feel like this release was really short-sighted. <laughs> you know, El Torito, I feel like when it came to the little people wrestlers... He wasn't so bad. He was good. Like, that WLC match, fantastic. Yeah, yeah, that one was a lot of fun, and he had a great feud going with Hornswoggle for a second. However, I think once you got rid of Los Matadores, you don't really have a whole lot of use for El Torito. Yeah, I mean, you can't have El Torito, like, in those weird Puerto Rican video packages that, <laughs> that, that they're doing. That just wouldn't make as much oh, sense, no, I feel I, like. I don't know what it is. So, um, it's, he, I feel like we haven't seen him in so long anyway that it's like he's kind of been lucky to get that paycheck the past few months. So, yeah. actually, probably even a year, if not more. So uh, next on my list is Cameron, uh, NXT superstar, former Funkadactyl. Oh, her favorite match of all time was Melina vs. Alicia Fox. That's the one from, uh, from the Tough Enough Steve Austin yeah. one. The underrated Tough Enough, in my opinion. Um, I'm a little... The only surprise I have about Cameron leaving is that... Now, I, I haven't watched Total Divas lately, but she was a very big part of the show last time I watched. Yeah, like, season one and two, she was on there quite a bit, because her and Naomi were like, hey, yeah. we have that, and stuff like that. So I was a little surprised to see her go, but obviously her wrestling was not up to snuff. Um, I would say, you know, good riddance, I'm not going to miss Cameron at all. I barely ever saw her. When you said Cameron, I had to say, who? <laughs> right, okay, sure. Yeah, the former Funkadactyl. Uh, up next, another guy who, I think he recently made a small splash in NXT wrestling, uh, Shinsuke Nakamura. Uh, didn't Alex Riley just have a match with him? Um, I have him a little bit behind on NXT. But okay. Yeah, I, I know Alex Riley had, like, didn't he have a feud with somebody in NXT that, that, that went pretty well? I think he feuded with Kevin Owens. Uh, I don't remember that. I only remember a feud. Well, he worked with Miz as a like ago. as like a well as a buddy. Yeah, and then I think as a as an opponent, and that was probably more than a year ago. That was like three or four years ago because Alex yeah. Riley came up from NXT when it was the weird when TV it was show. the weird reality show. Yeah, and then uh, he got he, he got like buried by the Miz, and then he eventually came back and like turned on the Miz, and he got a huge pop, and he got a huge push for a while. I thought that he went had nowhere. I thought he had potential. To mm -hmm. be honest with you, he was a great athlete. Had a he, great theme. He seemed to have a, a great natural heel presence about him. I don't remember his theme to be honest with you because I don't. Say it to my face. <laughs> that rings a bell now. Yeah. Um, and that boy, that was a great rendition of it too. I know. I'm um, so good right now. Not surprised to see him go, but surprised he didn't live up to more of his potential. I'll say that. Yeah. Right. So uh, the fourth one on my list is probably the biggest star on the list, but probably the least surprise. Uh, we all knew King Barrett was going to be leaving, uh, so he was part of this, uh, this mass removal of talent. Uh, this is someone I was surprised was so anxious to get out the door. Uh, had a pretty successful career, was pretty over. My girlfriend's favorite wrestler, and a lot of, a lot of chicks really dug uh, Wade Barrett. His bad news gimmick seemed to be working. He was a king of the ring. Um, I was surprised that he wanted to leave so anxiously. Your thoughts? Um, I'm really disappointed. It seems like they really dropped the ball with bad news Barrett because that was his most over of the gimmicks. Yeah. Like, I've got some bad news. Like, everybody wanted to get on board with that. And if you would have made him a face or a heel, it would have worked. But they just, um, I think he got hurt. Right. There was, there was bad time injuries. Yeah, he had, he had some bad timing injuries. And then the, the King Barrett thing was okay. He was in the League of Nations, which I liked him in League of Nations because I liked having that, that I, I like stables. You know, I was actually pro League of Nations because I thought that uh, I am pro stables. And they, together, they were better than the sum of their parts, I feel like. Like, I don't care about Sheamus or Rusev or Del Rio, but when you put them together as a heel faction, I care about them slightly. So that's the, my thought there. And, and, of course, the one I really liked in that group was Bad News Barrett. And uh, I'm sad to see him go, but again, not a surprise. Uh, the fifth name out of eight, Hornswoggle. 
Well, if you get rid of El Torito, like, get rid of Hornswoggle, too, because then Hornswoggle's nobody to feud with. Well, see, Hornswoggle, I kind of thought was going to be a lifer. Like, I just thought he'd be the go-to little person. He's for... been there for 10 years. I know. Is that, has it been that long? Yeah. I actually kind of thought more. He was there around 2005 to 2006. Yeah, and there's always, they always seen, whether it was, like, Dink back in the day, or, uh, man, there's, the, you know, Little Beaver before that. I mean, like, Max there's... Mini. Yeah, there's always, like, that one go-to guy, and they don't have that now. Right? Yeah. I know that uh, Hornswoggle was that little bastard for a long time. That's right. Yeah. And, and with, with, with Finlay. I remember, that was a great gimmick. And he was also Vince McMahon's son for a minute. Yeah, and the anonymous manager and the anonymous Raw GM, I think, wasn't he? You know, I, was that just a planned idea or did that actually... You know, I think he might have been. Yeah. I remember he ran Little People's Court under the, uh, the ring yeah. uh, for a few episodes or however that worked. Um, who's the go-to little person now? Is it Chris Jericho? Probably. No, Chris Jericho is the go-to dad bod. <laughs> that's, that's probably who it is. Maybe Could get some more tattoos. Perhaps Miz can be the go-to, um, you know, little yeah. guy. Um, I was surprised about this one. Zeb Coulter, Dutch Mantel. I mean, he, 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 he was brought in to help get over Jack Swagger. And I'm surprised <laughs> that I'm not seeing Jack Swagger's name on this list, honestly. You know, to be honest with you, that's a really good point. Um, but he was, I thought he was working for a minute, you know, I didn't like when he started teaming up with the guys who weren't American, because his gimmick was he, he hated immigrants and he all that stuff. He was racist. Yeah, exactly. He was the Donald Trump of managers, yeah. essentially. He wanted to build that wall and, you know, having people scoot over the border and all that kind of stuff, but he could have, if they would have kept with him uh, consistently, I think he could have, he could have done more. Yeah. Plus he's Dutch Mantel, like, just, he's kind of someone you want as like an ambassador, I feel like, we'll to the company. At, but we'll probably see him at the Coliseum in like a week or like, That's week true. Or he's probably in listening range of our radio stations probably, right now. Probably, yeah. So, uh, so there's that, by the way, he has been on uh, the Rob's Night Show before. Uh, oh, really? Him and a few, a few of the guys came in promoting his show and it was, it was nice to meet him. Wait a minute, I'm, I'm, I can't remember, no, I'm, I'm right about this. I, I apologize. I'm not going to call you out if you're not. <laughs> so, so there's that. Um, number seven. Santino Morella. Now, I knew that he had retired from in-ring, but was doing backstage stuff, so this doesn't surprise me, but it's kind of sad, because I thought Santino was going to be around forever, too. See, again, I thought a lifer, because he was, like, if you go to a house show, and there's a comedy gimmick, which there always is, like, you know, whether it be throwing merchandise, or hosting a dance contest, Santino was the guy to go to, mm -hmm. and he seemed to have that comedy timing, I guess, like, I mean... If you're a fan of comedy, which I know you are, it's like yeah. he's not funny. But in the world of wrestling, he's kind of the he's comedy. Entertaining. Yeah, he's a comic relief kind. He's entertaining of. enough to make you laugh. He'd be happy to dress up as a girl and be Santina if they asked him to, mm -hmm. or, or or basically do whatever. He was there to make you laugh, exactly. And I kind of thought that that role would be around for a little longer. Yeah. I don't. I never expected him to be taken seriously as a wrestler from this point forward, but I kind of thought he'd be around a little bit longer. Uh, so there's that. And then the last name, I think probably the most surprising, and this is also the last name that was announced uh, late on Friday, was Damian Sandow. I'm really shocked by that. Even though Damian Sandow had so much potential, he was a former Money, he was a money in the Bank winner. Uh -huh. uh, he lost his cash in, though. He did not win when he cashed in. That's true, yeah. Um, but go ahead. I'm really surprised because he had so much potential, but they just seemed that they couldn't figure out what to do with them. Every once in a while, they have a star that the fans just latch to, and then they want to just keep them down, it feels like. Like, they were almost pissed he'd get a bigger reaction than The Miz. And instead of capitalizing on that, which they should have, um, they just kind of forgot about it. Yeah. And that happens all the time. The intellectual savior thing worked okay, but then when he got over as, like, Damian Miz dad, that was awesome. Then they tried to make him a doppelganger gimmick. Where he that was, was the, the macho Sandow. Yeah. But that got killed because Curtis Axel, who was his Hulk Hogan tag team partner and like this fake mega powers, uh, had the gawker racist rant. So they're like, oh, we can't do this anymore. And this... it makes no sense to just have somebody running around as Macho Man Randy Savage if you don't have a terrible Hulk Hogan go with him. Right. And even still, that was a bad idea, I thought. Um, you could have kept with Mizdow, I feel like. And man, did they miss a potential feud there. Like, yeah. I mean, they may have had a match or two, but they could have had a feud going. Mm -hmm. So that was disappointing. And I thought uh, a guy who, you know, lived up to his potential momentarily, but, but should have done a lot more in the business. So uh, those are the eight names, and those are what we think about them. Yeah. Uh, we'll come back with another episode tomorrow of Post to Post, where we will talk about uh, Monday Night Raw, which we'll watch tonight and report on tomorrow. Uh, Steve will be back next week, so we've got uh, Gavin here in the meantime. Thank you, Gavin, for coming in. We really no appreciate problem. it. And we'll have two more episodes for you this week of Post to Post. For myself, The Rob, and my tag team partner, Gavin, we will see you later. We the people.